16, Jesus arrives with his disciples in Caesarea Philippi, where he asks his disciples, who do you say I am? And they began reciting everything that they'd heard from others. Some say you're this, some say you're that, and others say this about you. But Jesus said, but what about you? Who do you say I am? And Simon spoke up and answered something that he had not heard from anyone else, but that the only conclusion could have been that God had revealed truth to him. You're the Messiah. You're the son of the living God. And Jesus commanded him, acknowledging him that this revelation did not come as from his flesh man, but that, that he had been open and receptive to the voice of God who had revealed who he said he was. And right there and then, Jesus turned to Simon and said, now, are you ready for this? Because this is who I say you are. Until now you've believed a lie about yourself, but I'm gonna change the way that you see yourself. I'm about to give you a brand new identity. You are Peter, the rock. And on this rock, I'm gonna build my church and nothing, not even the enemy, will be able to shift it. And bam, just like that, Simon is given a brand new identity based on who God said he is. And this is one of four times in the Bible that the Bible records God changing a person's name. Jacob fought with God for an entire night, and in the morning God asked his name, to which he replied, Jacob, well, not anymore. You are now Israel. And bam, just like that, he took on a brand new identity based on who God said he was. In every case, identity was reborn from beneath to on top, from a follower to a fighter, from a hearer to a doer, from a victim to an overcomer. Two of the most important things that we could ever reveal to us through the voice of God in Scripture is who does He say He is and who does He say I am. And without answers to these questions, we'll never really discover our true identity and purpose. John 7, 38 says, When you believe that He is what the Scriptures is all about, then you will discover for yourself, face to face with Him, that you are what He is all about. And rivers of living water will gush out of your innermost being. Speaking of rocks in the beginning, the Bible says that the earth was formless and void. Design existed. Identity did not. Form in no way resembled its design. The earth looked nothing like what God had in mind. And then God spoke. And at that moment, everything changed. Identity was revealed and form was changed forever as God spoke life and purpose into this formless piece of rock. And all of a sudden, it was seething with light, life and abundance. By the way, the word hamatia, which we translate as sin, is the word that the writers of the Bible used to describe the formless and void earth before God spoke. Sin is not the presence of anything, but the absence of form, the void of light, life and abundance. Sin is a state where we look nothing like our design. Sin and formlessness only existed before God spoke, but now he has spoken and all things cannot stay the same. Your design is revealed in who he believes you to be. Your identity is limited by who you believe he to be and your form and your behaviors are determined by who you believe you to be. It's not until we see who he really is and he reveals to us who he believes we are and our minds are renewed into believing his opinion of us that our identity lines up with our, with our design and our form begins to change. Romans 8 28 says, and we know that in all things God works together for the good of those who love him and who have been called according to his purpose. God spoke and we are called according to his purpose. In other words, when we discover and believe who he says we are and what he says about us, life just makes a whole lot more sense. It seems better. It works better. It cannot go unchanged. That's his master plan, his blueprint, his grand design announced in our original design. When we discover who he really is and what he says about us, we are reprogrammed. We take on a brand new identity. We are renamed. We're called out and we're endorsed by the same voice that spoke and brought life to a formless piece of rock that healed the sick, that raised the dead, that brought light to the darkness and calmed the storms and that broke chains, opened prison doors and set captives free. When God speaks, things drastically change in the most dramatic of ways. I challenge you to contemplate the answers to these two questions. Who does he say he is and who does he say you are? And I believe God will speak life into the formless piece of rock that gave you self-doubt and feelings, feelings of inferiority. I believe that he'll reveal his design and purpose. I believe that he'll speak brand new identity over you and that his words will not and cannot return void, but will bring life where there hasn't been life before, light where the darkness overtook, healing where you had given up, rest where there was turmoil and freedom where there was no hope at all. 
Well, bless you guys, and I just want to finish by reading this to you. Now you are free to strip off that old identity like filthy, worn-out garment. Lust corrupted you and cheated you into wearing it. Be renewed in your innermost mind. Ponder the truth about you as it is displayed in Christ and begin with the fact of your co-seatedness. This will cause you to be completely reprogrammed in the way that you think about yourself. When you believe that He is what the Scriptures is all about, then you will discover for yourself, face to face with Him, that you are what He is all about, and rivers of living water will gush out of your innermost being. The spirit of man was never contaminated. It was the mind that was veiled by darkness. We were darkened in our understanding. There is nothing wrong with our design or our redemption. We were thinking wrong. In order for our thoughts to be rescued, Jesus, the incarnate image and likeness of God, faced our cruelest judgment and fears and died our death. We were co-crucified to bring absolute closure to every reference that we ever had of ourselves as a result of Adam's fall. And while we were dead in sins and trespasses, God co-quickened us, co-raised us, and co-seated us with Christ. And so... You are now free to strip off that old identity like filthy, worn-out rags.